What's happening guys and welcome back to the channel. For today's video, thanks to the amazing team over at ShowZ, we're going to be checking out the brand new DNA Design DK38 upgrade kit for the Transformers Legacy Menasaur. Now for those of you looking to add one of these to your collection, definitely be sure to check out the link down in the description box below. And this kit is monstrous. I think it's one of the biggest upgrade kits I've reviewed over on the channel since the Studio Series Devastator. So there's going to be a lot to get through in today's video and we may as well kickstart it off with a very quick overview of everything we get. So to start things off, I believe this is a pre-order bonus. It's basically a massive sword with this really sick translucent pink tip, which I actually really like the way this looks. But in addition to this, we also do get this nicely painted metallic silver version. Now I can already tell that this is a massive upgrade when in comparison to the sword that already came with Motor Master, as this thing is huge. So definitely can slice that version right out of the collection. We do also get this brand new chest piece. And I'll just mention this now, almost everything that we're going to be taking a look at this is way bigger than the original. Hasbro version so if you hear me keep repeating that this is way bigger there is a reason for that because this piece is huge too so very nice new chest plate I do believe this is supposed to be toy accurate these red sections are definitely ringing a bell I could be wrong let me know down in the comment section below but nice thick durable plastic we do get this new skirt piece which is articulated so these pieces can hinge forwards and backwards I think this is for the alternate transformation we do get a few trailer attachments which kind of change the transformation when in comparison to the stock figure so I'll be sure to touch base with this later on in the video we get a pair of articulated hands, which I think out of everything were the things that I was the most looking forward to. I love articulated fingers, and to be honest, these should have already came with the original Menasaur, as we'd seen Hasbro do articulated fingers with the likes of their Generation Select Seacons and Volcanicus. So these are going to be really cool. We do get a few extensions for the thighs, so... These again are a little bigger, but very nice plastic, nice gloss. And then finally, in terms of components for Menasaur himself, we get these massive feet. Now this section at the front is huge, but it does pack in a few additional panels for the trailer just to cover up that ugly piece that was shown at the front, the original chest plate of Menasaur, and also extends the trailer to make it look a little less stubby. So looking forward to seeing how these play out. And I like how they pack the engineering into the hill spur. So that's pretty awesome. And we also get a few additional attachments here, which are intended for that pointless kind of turret that was left over after you completed the combined mode. These are going to actually make that into a proper rifle for Menasaur to wield when in battle against the Autobots. So very exciting things. As per tradition, I'm going to go ahead and install certain components and then come back to you guys, showcase the differences, and then we'll just progress from there. So with all that being said, Stunticons combine to form Menasaur. Now for this step I thought I'd just add a bit of commentary to help you guys out. So here we have the DNA design component. As you may have just seen, we have literally just removed these ratchet joints from the original piece. Now I've already gone ahead and inserted one of these off camera as they are so freaking tedious. So that is just something worth bearing in mind. You're going to want to keep these from the original piece and they are going to slide into some tiny little slots. You can see I still have a slot left as I have to place this one in there. I personally recommend to maybe whack out the tweezers. I think that would potentially help you guys out just a little better. But yeah, place both of these in and you should be pretty good to go.
here we have Menasaur with the DK38 upgrade kit fully installed and looking sick. For those of you who thought he looked cool before, just wait until you check out some of the new details. Now, a few things worth mentioning is that the installation as a whole I thought was pretty decent. There are really only two steps which kind of puzzled me and were a little frustrating. One of those being where you have to reinsert the tiny ratchet joints into the new hip skirt. I definitely recommend bringing a pair of tweezers for that and also the installation of the new thighs. Considering that we're dealing with spring-loaded mechanisms and one of those being the essential joint of combining the lower leg to the thigh you're definitely going to want to make sure that that spring doesn't go catapulting across the room as if it does honestly guys you're pretty much screwed but other than that everything was pretty easy and straightforward so let's check out the details so first of all the biggest change to the robot mode would have to be this new chest piece which again I believe is toy accurate in all honesty I'm not too sure if I prefer this one when in comparison to the version that we saw with Hasbro I mean I love the detail that we had for this and the Decepticon logo plus that this actually integrates into the trailer transformation whereas you still have to remove this in order to transform him so a little lazy on DNA designs part it would have been cool had they added a few extra hinge joints so this too could have transformed with the trailer and I'm also not the biggest fan of how these hook pieces just kind of dangle over the top of the pre-existing chest but as we come down here to the hip skirt for the most part pretty similar to the original version I do like the deadly angles that we now have for this and considering that we have this piece it's on a hinge joint so it doesn't restrict the articulation at all which I thought was sick now my favorite part about this kit or one of them at least would have to be the articulated hand I mean, come on, this should have been already there with the Hasbro version, especially considering we've seen them do articulated hands with the likes of their generation select Volcanicus and Seacons, but these in particular are just in a whole other league. I think each finger alone has something like three distinctive points of articulation, plus they can all be individually splayed out, which is just so awesome. The only downside is that you lose the mech tech port in the hand, but I mean, you can use the ones here on the forearms, it really doesn't matter too much. And then here for the new thighs, as you guys can see, they are a little longer, you're not going to know that too much until we jump into the size comparisons but yeah definitely a little bigger I think the plastic match is near enough spot on on camera it's coming across to be a little worse than it is in person it's just due to the harsh lighting of the review station but yeah they look pretty cool and then finally in terms of aesthetic changes we come here to the feet now this basically acts like a shoe it slides over the top of the pre-existing foot so no screws or no pins required no removal etc really cool massive thick purple feet which is awesome and these do holster a few additional trailer pieces which will cover up that kind of ugly front piece of the trailer which I thought was cool and considering that the heel spurs are a little bigger it just makes balancing him a whole lot better but it doesn't end there an area where I think this kit improves the most in would be accessories so starting things off firstly we get this sword which is massive I mean if Menasaur was to use this in the battlefield he could literally wipe half the Autobot fleet out with one deadly swipe this thing is enormous I mean for comparison look at it it's almost the entire upper torso down to where the knee joints are so very big piece really like the detailing on this and for a comparison here it is alongside the sword that we originally got with Hasbro and I mean this was okay for Motormaster but for Menasaur the combined mode Damn, honestly, just get out of here. This is way cooler. Now, in terms of installation, it does have a tiny little slot here on the handle, much like some of the Masterpiece figures, and it will peg into the hand of this guy. So that's pretty cool. You can get him into some pretty dynamic poses. Or alternatively, here we have the trailer hitch that we'll use for the vehicle mode. It's supposed to peg into this slot, although the plastic is kind of bendy and rubbery, and it does just not want to stay in there at all. And then once you get that in there, it's also supposed to slot here into the port on the back. But at least on my copy, like I said previously, this does just not want to stay put so that's definitely a little unfortunate but nine times out of ten I'm probably going to be displaying this sword in the hand of this guy and I think one of the coolest pieces of this upgrade kit is where they took that pointless turret and turned it into this sick looking rifle for Menasaur to use I mean this truly is a weapon worthy of being wielded by Menasaur this thing is freaking huge and it's only like five different pieces which have made it look this cool so why Hasbro couldn't do something similar is completely beyond me but you can see we get these kind of missile rockets which attach here along the sides which I thought was cool and just these subtle pieces I mean it completely changes the look of this which I thought was so cool definitely going to be utilizing this in the display now in terms of him holding it like I said previously due to the articulated fingers we do lose the port so this time round you're going to want to take this which is on a hinge joint so it will move up and down and peg it into the forearm and then the hand will slide into that cavity so there you go, there we have Menasaur wielding this. Now considering it's so mighty and massive, you're definitely going to need the aid of the other arm for him to really hold it like he's doing some damage in battle, but yeah, sick looking figure, love the upgrades and it is really in combined mode that I think this kit shines.
So here we have him alongside some figures which I showcased in my original Menasaur review, just so you guys can see the difference in the scale. So we have the Earthrise Leader Optimus, the Netflix Deluxe Bumblebee, and the Studio Series Voyager Ironhide. So for those of you who thought the original stock combiner was a little too small, I think you're going to be pretty happy with how well this guy has turned out as far as the extensions go. Now when it comes to transformation from combine mode back into vehicle mode, first of all, you are going to want to remove the upgrade chest piece. It's unfortunate that they didn't find a way to integrate this into the transformation. I definitely think they could have, but anyhow, you just want to detach it. It's very easy to remove, and then we'll reinstall the original version that we got from Hasbro. You'll now take these skirt sections and just hinge these up like that. They are on double hinge joints, and now we'll take the thigh joints, rotate those so that these slots are facing forwards, and you'll basically transform it exactly the same as you would on the original version, so rotate the waist around, take this section here, rotate that around, and what's going to happen is when we flip these hip joints up, these slots are now going to slide into these tabs, so just snap that one in there and do the same here for this side and that is basically the new transformation for that front part of the trailer. You'll now want to take over the leftover pieces from that turret thing much like you would on the original version and basically just wrap it around this piece. We can now bring back in the legs and what's going to happen here is we're going to slide the foot out of this new upgrade component so like I said previously it literally does just slide on and off like a shoe. We can set this here off to the side and begin transforming this as luckily these do actually integrate into conversion so just open these panels here out. Now the actual toe itself is on a slider joint so for vehicle mode you're just going to want to slide that up and that tab is going to slide into that slot so snap that in there and I'm pretty certain you guys all know how this is going to go so we're then going to bring back in this piece and we have these massive slots at the top. Now as you guys remember on the original Hasbro version this was the front of the trailer of course minus the extensions that we have here for the thighs and it looked rather ugly. These are basically cover pieces so we get these huge tabs here which are basically just going to want to snap in like so. Repeat the same process on the opposite side. And there we have both of them, but we're not done just yet. So there is a hook that you'll just want to catch into this slot. Snap that there into place. And that is the front of the trailer now fully concealed, which I think is a massive improvement when in comparison to what we saw from Hasbro. It would have been cool to have seen the sides actually clip into place. As you can see, they do slightly jut out from the stock trailer that we saw from Hasbro. So it would have been cool to have got some proper clips, but overall, definitely leaps and bounds better. And the plastic match, I'd say, is near enough spot on. And the purple paint, too, it's literally a dead on match. So that's really pretty awesome. Now when it comes to the transformation of the arms, to be honest, nothing changes all that much. The only difference this time being is that you're going to want to take the hand on the right arm and just rotate it around like that. And it's only on the right arm. With that being said, we can then lift this section up and it will just snap into place. And then with this one, you don't even have to rotate. We'll just lift it back and it will snap into place. So we can combine the two halves as you would originally. Now is where you're going to want to bring in the sword. Now this does split up into three individual components. So first of all, you'll just want to gently wriggle the tip off and then we can take the midsection and slide it from the hilt and what's going to happen here is there is a tiny little tab here that this slot is going to peg into so just gently peg that over there and then the thumb of this hand will just rest over the top so that is the storage for the hilt just to give you guys a better perspective of how that looks Next up, you're going to want to bring in your legs fully combined as you would for the original Hasbro instructions, although this time you're going to want to stop yourselves from closing up these panels as that massive hollow void is going to act as some weapon storage. So we're going to take these big purple baddies that we used for the turret. They're just going to slide in the middle and then slide all the way here to the top. The knee pad will then come over the top and click into place. Now I really like the weapon storage on this particular piece. So on the underside of the original Hasbro foot there was this huge cavity. That's where you're going to want to bring in the handle for the turret and basically just sit it inside here. It will just kind of wriggle in there and then we can take this panel slide it over the top and you'd never know that it was even stored in there. Now for this side the only difference is that we don't have anything to fit inside the toe so it literally is just this purple piece that you'll just slide all the way inwards, snap that knee pad over the top and then just close all that up and that is the rear of the trailer completely transformed. You'll then want to bring in the excess pieces that we have left over from the blade and you can see we do get some tabs on either side. These are going to peg into the center ports that we have here for the top half of the trailer. So just to demonstrate, this is going to snap into place. Now I personally would be really careful of these tabs. It's very thin plastic so when you remove them just take your time, gently wriggle them out of place as if you just yank them out. I'm pretty certain you're going to snap the plastic and considering it's painted it just adds an extra layer of toughness. So just be careful of those but just snap that in there 
and that is the sword storage. Take the bottom and the top half and if you've lined everything up, it should just snap into place like a dream. So there are all of the weapons stowed away in the rear end of the trailer. Then you'll want to take your top half and your bottom half and surprisingly you can still add the Hasbro sword into its original placement and there's enough room in there. So just slide this here over the top and again lock everything into place and that is the trailer more or less fully transformed. And then finally we are left with Motormaster's cab and the trailer. So also we've got these three leftover pieces. I may as well touch base with it now. These two do not lock into the places that the instructions show. So for example this is supposed to peg into the rear of the trailer as you can see there is a tiny little slot that this piece is supposed to lock into and it does just not want to stay at all on my copy just continuously wants to pop off so in all honesty guys to save you losing pieces I'd recommend to just set this off to the side entirely we then get this additional adapter considering we now have this whole extra piece on the trailer the hitch itself sits a little further backwards so you're going to want to bring this piece in snap this into the trailer port and then just snap this here into place. Now we are left with a tiny piece of excess white plastic and the instructions mention us taking this which has a squared peg and snapping it into that circular port. Now at least on my copy again the tolerances are just off. That does not want to lock in at all. It's just the circumference. This is not thick enough to peg into this. So again another accessory that I'd personally just recommend setting off to the side. But with all that being said here we have the king of the road fully equipped with the trailer and all the upgrade pieces. And I mean come on hands down it looks so much better especially from a front on perspective. I mean do you guys remember when we had literally the chest piece of Menasaur facing forwards with those hip joints? It just looked awful. Now granted, this doesn't look 100% perfect, especially as we come here to a side perspective. The trailer really does look mangled and kind of mashed up. We've got gaps here, there and everywhere, but I think they did their best with what they had. And I mean, definitely, it looks cool. I know you guys are more than likely going to utilize this kit for the combined mode anyhow, but I thought I'd just showcase this off. Now, if I had any problems with this trailer, like I said previously, I do wish that these pieces could have maybe clipped in a little better. I mean, they're literally only held together via this clasp at the front. And from a side perspective, if you guys may be able to tell but the trailer kind of sits a little more upright than it did originally it's not completely neutral like it was before but again a minor qualm now I'll give you guys a very quick comparison alongside his nemesis that being the Earthrise Optimus Prime so from a side by side for those of you who originally remember the cab of Motormaster was always much bigger but because the trailer was short and stubby it just kind of looked out of proportion whereas now as you can see that trailer is way bigger and longer when in comparison to Earthrise Prime so yeah, better proportions. And wrapping up on the review for the DNA Design DK38 upgrade kit for the Transformers Legacy Menasaur. This has been a highly awaited kit and has it delivered? Well I'd say for the most part yes. In combined mode the articulated fingers are excellent, the additional swords are so much better than the stock Hasbro version. I also like the extra boost in height he has due to the thigh and foot extensions. I do have a little bit of an issue with the chest piece not integrating into the transformation. It appears as if though they tried their best with pretty much all of the components. So to see that literally just being an excess piece that you have to lay off to the side I think is a little lazy it would have been cool if that could have gone through a little bit of transformation then we get into the trailer mode and whilst I do like the entire additional portion that we have for the trailer I maybe wish they could have tidied it up just a little better I mean maybe they could have added a few extra clips just so it could have sat a little more flushly when in comparison to the rest of the trailer but that truly is a minor qualm I think the majority of collectors are going to be keeping this in the combined mode and it definitely does work very effectively although it is pretty expensive but these upgrade kits never appear to really decrease in terms of value over the years if anything they just appear to be getting higher and higher and higher so I'd recommend jumping on this sooner rather than later especially for a combiner once this thing is sold out I don't think it's likely to ever see the light of day again so I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comment section below as a whole what do you guys think of this kit is it one that you plan on adding to the collection and until my next review I'll see you then thanks for watching